Yes, you have read the title correctly. Let me explain. I was reading from my YouTube comments and I found this. It was a comment from Numpack and Numpack said, do you think color grading the Vintage Resolve is better than using Lightroom? I'm still learning and I'm not sure if I should get Lightroom. And Dennis, Dennis is super helpful by the way. I've seen Dennis comment on a lot of my videos. Dennis said, honestly, there's no need for Lightroom. Convert a raw picture to DNG via Adobe DNG Converter. Load the DNG into Resolve, convert it into BMD Film Version 4 and let the grading begin. So I looked at this and thought, hmm, interesting. Now this isn't actually as crazy as it sounds because I actually made a video a long time ago about making cinemagraphs in DaVinci Resolve. Please, please, please now watch that video. It's absolutely old and terrible. But I was able to take an image a still image and turn it into an animated cinemagraph with individual resolve. So this concept of taking an image and editing it in individual resolve isn't as crazy as it sounds. So today's video, we're going to be attempting to edit photos in individual resolve 17 to see if it's any good and if it is indeed viable. Spoiler alert, it really is. Without further ado, let us indulge my friends. Okay, so here we are in individual resolve 17. Welcome, welcome. So I'm gonna go through the process of how I personally would go through editing photos in DaVinci Resolve 17. Some people may have different processes and different ways of doing it, but this is how I probably would approach this task. So first and foremost, I'd probably create a new timeline. So I'm gonna go to File New Timeline. Um, I'm gonna not click Use Project Settings. I'm gonna change it. I'm gonna go to Format. I'm going to change the timeline resolution to the resolution of what I want my photos to be exported as. Now, if you wanted to, you can go to your photo and find the resolution of it, whether it's 3560 by whatever you want. I'm actually going to be doing it by the Instagram aspect ratio because I'm going to be editing these as if I'm going to be uploading it to Instagram. So for that, I'm going to go to 1080 by 1350 and it's going to give us this frame in here, which is good. Then I'm going to drag my photos in like so. These are all of the images that we're going to be using and we're going to go to the color page. So follow me. I'm going to go from the edit page to the color page now. Okay, so this is where the fun happens. We're going to disable clips. We're going to disable open effects for now. And for now, I'm going to disable LUTs. Nope, I'm going to put LUTs back in. So this here is the image, and this is a cut the powerful, all powerful color page of individuals of 17. So there's a few ways which I think you can approach this. I'm going to be going through each and every one. Okay, so the first way is as follows. If we try to import one of our LUTs in, you can see that the effect is way too strong. So what we can do is we could import a LUT. So I've gone to LUTs, gone to my Guardian LUT pack, link in the description if you want to get it. I'm going to my Guardian Lot Pack. I've picked onto this. Now I'm going to click onto the node. I'm going to go to the key output. And I'm just going to change the key output to 0.6 or 0.5. This again acts as like an opacity slider. And just like that, we have gone from this to this straight away, literally this to that. Now I'm going to press Alt S to create a new node. And I'm going to begin editing. What I'm probably going to do is I'm going to change the hue of the leaves. So I'm going to go to my curves, go to hue versus hue, click onto the green, and I'm just going to manipulate this value. And as you can see, we're adjusting the hue of the leaves. In fact, I want it to affect a wider area, a wider range. So I'm going to click onto this end node here, and I'm going to click input hue and move it to the right, just so it affects more of an area. The exact same thing to the left, click onto this, input hue, move it to the left. There we go. Now when I manipulate this, it's affecting more of a range. Now, <laughs> this is going to be extremely random because I'm not sure what kind of look I'm going for, but I kind of like this. I'm going to leave it here. Yep. Not bad. But so far, straight away, we've gone from this to this, and that doesn't look too bad, but it does look quite dark. And if I'm looking at my scopes, we have a bit of range to move with. So I'm going to go to my primaries on the left hand side here. I'm going to increase my gain. Gamma a little bit. Lift just a tad. I'm going to create a new node. I'm going to go to curves, custom, change it to editable splines. Editable splines basically gives you these handles. So it's much smoother transition. I'm going to bring this down to her face. The highlights aren't crushed on her face. Bring it. Looks good. Great. Now we're going to smooth her skin. Now there's a few ways to do this. The easiest way is going to be using the qualifier tool. So we're going to hit this tool here. We're going to click onto our skin, onto her skin rather. Make sure this is selected, this icon here. And to see the qualifier tool in action, we're going to hit the highlight tool. So press the highlight tool. 
we're bang and just like that mm -mm -mm. so right now i actually want to affect more of a range so i'm going to click this icon here which is the feather add so you're basically going to add in more tones within a specific range but it's also going to be feathering it so it's a lot smoother than just generally adding to the selection i'm going to do this here as you can see look as i'm dragging it, it's increasing but also smoothing out and this looks good to me so now i'm going to use the matte finesse controls just to denoise it a bit get rid of the noise i'm going to clean the white clean the black there we go and I'm just going to manipulate a few of these controls in the qualifiers. So low, have it here, or soft, we can soft it out a bit. Go high, no. Luminance, we want to affect more. Okay, that looks good to me. So now, if I manipulate anything with my primaries, for example, it's going to affect only what we've highlighted with the qualifier tool. So, see? It's a crazy example. But we're not going to go that far. Um, I'm going to take off the highlight tool just so we can see what we're doing at the moment. So, okay, fine. So, like I said, I'm going to be smoothing out the skin. So now that I have the qualifier tool selected, I'm going to go to the third tab of my primaries rule, which goes to the log. And then I'm going to go to mid-tone in detail. If you've seen my power window video, you actually know that this is a method that I use to smoothen skin. So I go down to mid-tone in detail and I can just drag this down. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually smoothing the skin. I'm not going to go too crazy because it will start to look unnatural. So just enough. Perfect. Speaking of my power window video, we can actually add what S. We can go to our power windows and add a power window. So I could just grab an ellipse, a circular power window. Do this, drag it down. Affect this area, feather it crazy. And again, have the same controls as before. If I wanted to smooth the skin that way, I could. I think I'm just going to use this to going to go off just so I can look manipulate a little bit of the skin tone a little bit off on off on yep yeah. off on so so far we've gone from this to this which is not bad it's actually not bad we can go further though so I'm going to affect a little bit more I want to increase the saturation of the leaves I'm going to create a new node. This is taking way too long, by the way. The next few methods I show you is not going to be as long as this, I promise. This is just literally if you're going to be editing almost from scratch. Okay, next I'm going to go to use. Yes, so hue versus saturation. We're going to click onto the color of the leaves because we want to affect this hue and increase the saturation. So hue versus saturation. And you can see it's automatically selected the colors that we want. So, yep, I can bring it down to get rid of the saturation, which is kind of a cool look. But we're not going for that. I want to increase it increase it and this is because i want to increase just the leaves and not the overall saturation of the image because then her skin tone starts to look a bit too crazy we don't want that that seems to look pretty good to me and now if you really wanted to you can actually add effects because again we're individual resolve so we can go to open effects i can add a prism blur and if you wanted to get really fancy and add some crazy stuff Look, we have this. So I can move this around. I'm going to take the blur strength off because I don't want it to blur. I'm going to, there's a vignette one actually, I can see it. I think I'm going to take the vignette off and I'm going to dial down the strength of the effect. So it's quite subtle. Off, on. So look, just like that, we've actually edited a photo. Fairly simple. We can actually do a lot more to this but i don't want this video to be way too long because my videos have been quite long lately i apologize so this is the first method so what we've done is we literally quite simply one of our lots link in description as a base we then went to the keying tab just to dial down the opacity of the lot because if it's at 100 percent, it's quite intense you might want this effect you might want it to be this intense but i didn't so i lowered the key output just down ever so slightly so it's not as strong so I lowered it until it looked about right. And then we went on color grading as normal as maybe we would do for normal video editing, really. So that's the first process of, you know, that's not bad. I'm going to be honest with you. That's actually not bad. This is the first process that I would potentially use. It's okay. Mm, is it viable? Mm, maybe, maybe not. Because if you had other images, let me go to my, for example, this image here. And I want to use one of my effects. I can do this and again, go to my key output, bring it down at, as an opacity slider. 
yeah it's okay but it's not necessarily the best workflow because it doesn't account for other things such as the highlight roll off best method i found is actually what i'm going to be doing next and this is kind of based on what dennis was saying so what we're going to be using by the way and this is definitely the method you should be using is a color space transform tool essentially how it works is it takes the color space of something and transforms it into something else so for example hold on okay say for example i'm shooting on my sony camera and at the moment i'm shooting my black magic camera also if i'm recording the exact same time exact same codec exact same frame rate and exact same resolution it's still going to look different because the cameras have different ways it reproduces the color because of the sensor and the color science so essentially what happens when you use a color space transform is you're basically matching the color science of one camera to another that's a really extremely oversimplified version of what it does and how it works but why this is powerful is because we can actually take a photo and manipulate it and turn it into a much more workable color science one which has better highlight rollers for example or one which certain lots are built specifically for so without a doubt the best color science on the market as we speak right now is ari ari produced incredible cameras i'm not going to get into it at the moment but what we're going to be doing is going to be converting our images into the color science of either an ari log c or Black Magic Design, because Black Magic produces the DaVinci Resolves and their cameras are very, very good. So let me show you the process of how to do it, why it works and why this is the best method. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve 17 again, where well, we've always been here. I just went off on the tangent. Okay, so to enable color space transform, we're gonna go to open effects and we're going to type in color. You're gonna find the color space transform tool. Now I'm gonna disable this for now and just show you why this is important. So right now I'm hovering over my LUTs, right? And as you can see, they're quite intense and they look really, really crazy. If we use a color space transform, we're going to use the input gamma. We're going to change this to Rec 709. This looks like footage shot without any log mode whatsoever, just a standard picture profile. We're going to grab that. That's the input gamma. That's the gamma of the camera, if you will, that we're putting in to the color space transform. The output gamma is essentially what we want to turn this camera into. So we basically want to say this photo was taken with this picture profile or color profile, if you want. We want to transform it into a different or workable color profile and that's going to be either black magic design film or area log c now just watch what happens when i click area log c just watch you see that you see how it's now gone to more of a flat picture profile now area log c is basically a flatter picture profile it's a log picture profile so when you're shooting video typically you tend to shoot in a flat picture profile because during post-production when it's flat you can manipulate a lot more of the colors Whereas when it's like this, it's a lot more difficult to change certain colors. You have a lot more latitude and leeway to work with. And the reason why Arilog C is one of the greatest output gammas that we're going to be using is because it has incredible highlight roll off. When you're looking at footage shot with Arilog C, one of the things you'll notice is one, the colors, and two, just how beautiful and smooth the transition of highlight roll offs are. So there's two output gammas that we could potentially be using. It's going to be based on your preference. And I'm going to show you which ones to use and why. The first is Aerial Log C and you can see it gives a really nice flat picture profile. So I can use any of my LUTs and it looks, it literally, it just works straight away as you can see, it just works. Even if for example, I go to some other clips and I copy this transformation across, so for example this, and I add some more LUTs, you can see it just works. We've got our color space transform right here, Aerial Log C, just works straight away. Not convinced, let's find another example. Let's do this one here. I'll copy the transformation across. Color space transform here, as you can see, apply some of the LUTs, just absolutely works. And if it was to turn it off, for example, you can see how crazy it starts to look. And if you look at the highlights of the face, it's really harsh and it's crushed. You look at the graph, it's crushed and blown out completely. We enable the color space transform, it's much smoother. Now this isn't a color space transform video. I'm meant to be making a video specifically for that, for video, but this is just why we're going to be using this for editing photos. It's going to be the exact same principle. Anyway, as I was saying, so this is why I would use Arial Log C because it's, it's nice and it's flat. Why you would use Blackmagic Design Film, if you look, when I change between the two, Arial Log C is a little bit more flat. Blackmagic Design Film is still flatter than the original image, but it has a little bit more contrast. If I add a LUT now, for example, let me just add this LUT and I change the output gamma from Blackmagic Design to Arial Log C. You can see that Arial Log C has a little bit less contrast. Blackmagic Design has a little bit more contrast. If you wanted to edit your photos with less contrast and add it in yourself, then I would say use Arial Log C because now we have like a flat base and after the fact here, I can just, let me zoom in. 
I can literally just add any contrast, any amount of contrast I want, get to the perfect base. If, for example, you wanted to save time, I would change the output gamma to Black Magic Design Film, because as you can see, it's added the contrast for us, and then you could literally just brighten up. Okay, so hopefully that wasn't a crazy explanation and it made some sort of sense. Again, I kind of briefly skimmed over it, not in too much detail, because I'm gonna have a video dedicated specifically for it. But the point of the matter is, Use the color space transform if you're going to be editing photos. So use color space transform, put it on the first node, put the input gamma as rec 709. Use black magic design film if you want a little bit of contrast. Use Arialog C if you want it to be less contrast. I'm going to use Arialog C because I want to add the contrast in myself. And just like this, we can add a lot. And I'm going to increase the contrast myself. Now we can literally go in and adjust any of the settings as we wanted to. So we can increase the color of it a little bit. We can go to saturation versus hue, hue versus saturation, increase the colors of the blue, make it pop, or we can completely get rid of it, but I want to make it pop a bit more. Not too much, because you can actually see the image start to break. If I manipulate this too much, there's a lot of distortion. So just enough. We have a nice teal and orange contrast right here. In fact, we can change our scopes. Yep, look at this. Look at this, beautiful, absolutely beautiful. We can add some effects. We can add a light ray. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, that looks a little bit crazy. But actually, no, this actually looks pretty good. If I manipulate it, in fact, we might have to use just a glow instead because I want this candle to get a bit more of a bloom effect. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so now we've gone from this to this, literally, this to this, and we've edited in a video editing software. Okay, now I know you have a question. If you have multiple images, for example, as I do, right here you can see I have so many images, how would you copy across one look to another? There's two ways you can do it. The first way is as follows. You could, after you've done your corrections, as you can see the right hand side, you can right click and press grab still. And right now it's created a new still right here called 1.32. If I go to, for example, this image here, I right click and press apply grade. You can now see that we've applied the same look as the other image. In fact, you can actually highlight multiple images, right click onto the gallery, press apply grade. And as you can see, each of these photos have that same look applied. Now, if you can't see all of these, you might need to enable gallery at the top corner. So by default, it might be on LUTs or media pool, but I just change it to gallery. And then when you right click and save the still, you'll be able to see it here also. The second way to copy across a look is go to the photo, which doesn't have any edits, find a photo, which does. So for example, this photo, and then middle mouse click onto the photo that does have the edits. And as you can see, it's going to copy across all of the different transforms. So if you wanted to copy across all of your looks, you can do it that way. Or if you just wanted to copy across a base, which has the color space transform and enables you to just quickly apply any luck that you want or do your corrections, you can do it as simple as that. Now there's one more thing that I want to show you. And if you remember, <laughs> I actually have a video on how to steal the color grades and look from another film. And essentially you can actually do that with photos also. So right now I still have the same photos here. So the Joker and all these other movies. This is the clip that I want to apply the effect to. I'm going to go to the Joker, press control, click onto it, then right click, go to shot match to this clip. Just like that, it looks a bit terrible, but it's actually applied the effect. If I go to a better example, like this image here, hold control, click onto the Joker photo, right click, short match to this clip. Just like that, we've actually copied across. <laughs> The color gradients. If, for example, you didn't want to get any LUTs, link in description, 50% off, um, and you want to just quickly copy the color grade of a film or a photo, you can do it this way also, which is pretty handy and quite simple. Not only this, but it actually applies onto a node. As you can see, it says shot match. We can do some corrections after the node, but we can even dial down the effect. So if we go back to the key and tab, the key tab here, and to lower the key output, again, it works like an opacity slider. Yep. All of these secrets I'm giving you guys. I hope you enjoy them. Hopefully this was useful for you. Thank you very much to Nompak and Dennis for actually giving me the idea to create a video like this. So like this video, share, subscribe, comment, like, and I will see you on the next video. Peace.